Hi, welcome to Classic Cars Driven. My name's Matt Nichols, and today we're driving the Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow version two. Launched in 1965, the Silver Shadow was an attempt by Rolls-Royce to modernize. It had a slightly vintage image. It knew that and they wanted to get up to date. In doing so, they produced a, a monocoque car for the first time, included uh, self-leveling front and rear suspension, brought across from uh, Citroen under license. After a couple of years production, they realized that the front leveling suspension wasn't necessary, so it was dropped, and uh, it was only the rear that was maintained. Obviously, power-assisted brakes with disc brakes all round, so good stopping power and a number of other attractive features. It launched this car and it stayed in production for 15 years in both forms. This being the later 1977 to 1980 Silver Shadow 2 with some slight improvements to the handling and uh, revised steering, moving away from recirculating ball and going to uh, the full rack and pinion affair. This is a 1977 car and uh, in its day they've been bought by uh, captains of industry, lords and ladies and this is how they travelled around. Ample space inside, very plush leather interior, walnut dash, huge boot for any amount of luggage and that sort of waffness that you only get I think from travelling around in the Rolls Royce. The comfort is unbelievable. You sit here feeling nice and high and mighty. This was at a time really other than the Range Rover when uh, the sort of SUV era hadn't really crept in so th this is about as high as it got so you do feel rather superior driving this around and I'm also not disappointed I've never been a real massive fan of the, of the concept of Rolls Royce if you like a sort of highly luxurious vehicles I've always preferred cars that handle uh, have performance sound nice and of course all of that's taken from you in this car and so in terms of the driving experience, there's a very, very thin rimmed wheel and the car itself weighs in excess of two tonnes. So this is not something that you're going to throw around the back roads of Britain. This is a car that you want to cruise around in. I suspect the fuel economy is not all that great either. So uh, you might uh, not fancy putting your foot down too often anyway. Of course, when you do, and the term is progress, progress is made at a faster rate. And uh, there's no doubting that the 6.75 litre Rolls-Royce engine is capable of turning out decent performance. Sort of, it was never announced officially, but uh, thought to be in the region of about 190 horsepower in later cars. It matters not, the engine is not part of the driving experience. It's more about the interior and how you feel inside. Like I said, there's leather, there's a walnut dash, there's the electric seats, there's a cigarette ashtray, uh, dedicated to the driver and to the passenger and the same for the rear occupants. Clearly back in the 70s everybody still smoked. The instrument panel is also still very well appointed. Um, there's no rev counter and uh, that would be sort of uh, wrong in a way for a Rolls Royce. There is obviously a speedo and then there's gauges for uh, amps, uh, engine temp, um, oil pressure and of course the fuel gauge, which I am watching slightly anxiously as I make my way around the uh, middle of the Cotswolds here near Chipping Camden. There's air conditioning, and when you set the air conditioning, there's a gauge on the dash that shows you what the inside temperature of the car is. There's also an upper temperature and a lower temperature. How down to an abbey is that? Listen carefully as we come up to this junction. About the only thing you can hear in this car is the clock. Just the tick of the engine behind, but it's just the clock. How Rolls Royce is that? A certain nostalgia I'm feeling today with this I must admit it's actually better to drive than I thought it was the uh, the handling is quite sweet 
Uh, the steering, although light, is, uh, is positive enough. And for a, a two-ton car, uh, you're not really wrestling it around the roads. Uniquely, you don't feel inclined to, uh, to floor it everywhere. Um, so a sort of gentle pace, typically 50, 60 miles an hour, in your own little luxurious leather-bound bubble. The only thing I can hear is the occasional creak of the leather uh, and the road noise coming up from the tyres. The engine, all 6.75 litres of it, in a V8 format, is completely silent. You just can't hear it at all, which I think is what the car is all about. This is luxurious travel on a grand scale. I'm Matt Nichols. This is ClassicCarsDriven.com and today we've been driving the Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow Series 2.